Hi everyone! Thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife. If you enjoy the content you find here, please consider subscribing, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all of the links in the description box below. So today we are going to be talking about pressure canning and we're going to be talking about it from a beginner's perspective. Um, I started a series on canning for beginners. Um, so if you, the previous video that I did talked about canning in general and about the equipment that you need and some rules and guidelines that you should follow. So if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to do so. I will link it for you in the description box below and I'll try to put in an iCard over here for you so that you can easily find it. Um, I'm not going to repeat much of that in this video so I would encourage you to go check that out especially if you are, are brand new to canning. A lot of people are afraid of pressure canning which was one of the things that um, led me to do this video. I have several of you who follow me for my canning videos and you've shared with me that you've purchased your uh, pressure canner but you're a little hesitant to use it because you're a little bit of afraid. So the main thing that I want to accomplish in this video is I want to dispel all of your fears. First of all, as I stated in my first video about canning, canning is totally safe if you follow all the rules and guidelines and understand how to use the canner that you're using. There's nothing to fear. There's really nothing mysterious about it. It's just a matter of following steps each and every time and following guidelines for safe canning. So if I don't accomplish anything else here today, I want to dispel your fears of pressure canning. Now pressure canning is a little more, um, can be a little more scary than water bath canning. Most people don't worry about water bath canning. Pressure canning is, can be a concern because you're canning under pressure and that can, um, bad things can happen if you misuse your canner or you don't follow instructions correctly. So I'm going to give you the instructions that you need to feel confident about canning, especially your pressure canner. And the other thing that I've done, and I did this because when I first started pressure canning, um, I was also afraid and I was afraid I would mess up. So I created a checklist for myself so that I could learn the steps and eventually you remember the steps but it made it easy for me to just go through and say I've done this I've done this I've done this I've done this that way I didn't miss anything so I put together a handy dandy little checklist for you you can find this on my website at thriftychichousewife.com. Go to my website and I will have a tab called canning checklists. And under that tab, you'll be able to find a printable version of this for pressure canning. I also have one for water bath canning. And I also have a list there of uh, foods that are not safe for canning so that you can have that handy as well. But just pop on over there and you can print yourself a copy. If you laminate the checklists, um, especially until you get completely acclimated to the process. You can check things off as you go and then just wipe it off for the next time until you feel completely comfortable and you don't need the checklist anymore. So I thought that that would be helpful and I hope that you guys will take advantage of that. Um, it is an exhaustive list and I don't mean to imply that you're not smart enough to figure some things out, but I really put down the details for everything from preparing jars and lids and the tools you need to preparing your canner, um, and, and all of that. So it's very exhaustive. Plus the, uh, steps that you go through for processing, it's all here so that you have it. So like I said, it's not meant to, um, insult anyone's intelligence. It's really meant to be helpful to you. So check that out on my website and I will leave a link to my website in the description box for you below. So let's talk about pressure canning. Why is pressure canning important? I think there are some basic things that you need to understand about pressure canning. You certainly don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to understand all the science behind it, but understanding the basic principles of it will help put some of your fears to rest. And I think that that's important. Um, 
Pressure canning is for foods that are low in acid. So we're talking about meats, vegetables, and beans, um, and some combination foods that may have some high acid in them, but have also have low acid food, low acid foods including included in their recipes. And what we want to accomplish, the fear with home canning is the existence of botulism. The scientific name, and I know I'm going to botch this terribly, Clostridium botulinum, I think this is what is the scientific name for it, and that is the um, thing that we're most concerned about, and that is why we have to can under pressure. Water bath canners don't get hot enough to kill the um, spores that can produce botulism, so that is why we can under pressure. Water bath canners only reach a temperature of 212 degrees degrees, pressure canners can get up to 240 degrees. So that is why pressure canning is important. And that's why certain foods can be, should be pressure canned as opposed to being water bath canned. So a little bit about how the process works. Uh, when heat is applied to a sealed canner, pressure builds up inside that canner. Water inside the canner forms steam, which replaces the air. When the vents are closed, only pressurized steam hotter than boiling water remains in the center. It is necessary to make adjustments to the pressure at altitudes above 1,000 feet. Now, if you watched any of my videos, I do talk about this. Um, I'm always referring, when I give you my processing time and my PSI, I'm referring to what I use for a thousand feet or less. So um, it's important that you find out your altitude and you can do that very easily by Googling your city and state and it will tell you if you're in another country, uh, your, wherever you live in another country, Google should be able to tell you that as well. So it's important to know that and then you will know the PSI that you need to can at and what other adjustments you need to make. Sometimes you have to extend your time and things like that. So you will be able to find out that information. So that's the first point. Make sure you know your altitude so you know what adjustments that you need to make. Just to go over a few foods that are included in the low acid category that must be pressure canned, it's gonna include most vegetables, asparagus, beets, carrots, green beans, dried beans, okra, peas, peppers, potatoes, pumpkin cubes, and sweet corn, meats, beef, poultry, minced meat, pie filling, seafood and wild game, and then combination foods such as meat sauces, soups, and stews. Just so you kind of have a general idea in your mind of what needs to be pressure canned, jams, jellies, and fruits, um, acidified foods like salsas and tomatoes, those can be water bath canned. You do not need to pressure can them. Basically, there are two types of pressure canners. There is a dial gauge canner, and then there are weighted gauge canners. I have an all-American canner and it is both a, it's technically you use it as a weighted gauge, but it has both the dial and the weight. And I love this. I loved it as a new person because it had so much information to help me know what I needed to do and that I was following procedures correctly. And I'll, I'll talk more about that when we talk about the actual process of pressure canning. So if it's in your budget, I highly recommend the All-American Canner. It's just almost foolproof. Um, it has a lot of safety features that I like as well. So if you can afford the All-American Pressure Canner, I highly recommend it. Now for the All-American Pressure Canner, I do need to make a disclaimer. It is on their website and in their manual. I have the 915. They also make one that is a little bit smaller than this, the 910. Those two canners cannot be used to process fish. So if you're a fish lover, then you'll have to go up to the 921, I believe it is, um, if you want to can fish. Um, I don't can fish, so this is perfect for me. I love the 915 for its size. So if fish is not an issue for you, the 915 is, in my opinion, the perfect size unless you're gonna be processing lots and lots of food. Um, I don't process lots of stuff. This canner will hold uh, seven quart jars, um, seven to nine pint jars. Um, so it's perfect for a nice batch of food and for our family, it works really well. If you have a large family or you can't doing lots of canning, then you'll want a larger canner. Back to the two types of pressure canners. Uh, like I said, there's a dial gauge, there is a weighted gauge. Um, there's also 
two types in that the All American has is is a metal to metal uh, seal. The other type has a gasket seal. So um, gaskets have to be replaced periodically. So if you have a pressure canner that has a gasket, you want to make sure to check it each season before you start canning and make sure that it is still in good shape. If not, you need to make sure that you replace it. Also dial gauge canners, if you have the dial, you're going to want to make sure to have that tested annually to make sure it's working properly. Um, you can have that done at your local extension office. They will do that for you for free. So that's a couple of things that are important to know about your canner. Um, don't, um, don't confuse a pressure canner with a pressure cooker. There are a lot of pressure cookers out there that people are using these days, the Instant Pot and others under other names, those are not safe for canning at this time. With the exception of Ball has an automatic canner, I forget exactly what they call it, but it's strictly for water bath canning and it is specifically made and tested for canning jams and jellies and foods that are high in acid. There are no pressure cookers or multi-use um, pressure cookers that are approved for pressure canning at this time. So just don't even go there. I know there are people who use them, but as of now, the National Center for Home, Preser Home Food Preservation states that that is not safe to do that. So um, that's just something to note. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, which is kind of cool, is in case you don't know this, your pressure canner can also be used as a water bath canner. With the exception of you have to make sure that your pot is tall enough to cover your jars by one to two inches. So for mine, mine's not tall enough to water bath can quart jars, so I could only do pint jars, but I can use this for water bath canning. If you wanna use a pressure canner for water bath canning, you just are gonna leave the weight off and make sure that it does not um, pressurize in any way. Some people even go as far as to, you don't wanna lock down your lid or anything like that. Some people will um, let the lid be a little bit ajar like that so that no pressure builds up. But you can use them as a water bath canner if you choose, with the exception of making sure that it's tall enough to cover your jars by one to two inches. Okay, now for the procedures for pressure canning. Your canner will have a rack in it, just like with a water bath canner. So you're gonna put your rack in your canner and then you're going to add two to three inches of water to the bottom of your canner and you're going to bring that up to a simmer approximately 180 degrees. While that's coming up to temperature you can get your uh, other things let ready, your jars and your lids, that kind of thing and uh, get that ready to go while that's coming up to a nice simmer. Don't let it boil because then you run the risk of evaporation of some of the water you put in your canner. So just up to a simmer only up to 180 degrees. Um, then you're going to fill your jars, and I talked about that in my first video, but we'll go over that again. I'm going to do a whole procedure for you so that you can see it. Uh, fill your jars, and then you're going to place them on the rack of your canner. And then you're going to latch the lid once you, and I'll show you when we go through, actually go through the procedures, but you're going to latch your lid, you're going to turn up the heat, and then you're going to let your vent this is your vent, that's where your weighted gauge sits. You're gonna let steam come out of that for 10 minutes. At that point, you are going to, once it's vented for 10 minutes and you're gonna add your weight, bring it up to temperature. Once your weight starts rocking and rolling or your dial gauge comes up, tells you that it's at the correct PSI, then you can start your processing time. Once you start your processing time, you're going to want to reduce your heat from high down just so that you are maintaining the pressure in your canner or your weight is rocking one to four times a minute. If at any time your canner falls below the correct pressure, you have to start your timing all over again. So when you adjust your heat so that it's not rocking and rolling too much or going past your PSI, if you adjust it too fast, you run the risk of 
the pressure in your canner dropping and when that happens like i said you have to start your timing all over again after processing you're going to remove your canner from the heat i just turned my heat off it's never a good idea to try to move your canner you should just turn the heat off and you're going to let it cool to zero pressure naturally don't try to do anything to force it to cool down faster that's not a good canning practice and it could cause damage to your canner or to your jars and we don't want that once your canner has returned to zero pressure naturally you can remove your weight and then you're going to wait 10 minutes and after 10 minutes then you can remove the lid and remove your jars the 10 minute wait is important because that can reduce siphoning in your jars siphoning refers to liquid loss in your jars um, and that can happen when the temperature fluctuates too quickly. So we wanna kinda of do that slowly. So remove your weight and wait 10 minutes. Now I have found that there are some differences in instructions at this point between the National Center for Home Food Preservation and Extension Office that I consulted and Ball and my canner. Their instructions are similar, but they're kind of different on time. So I'm going to share with you what the National Center for Home Food Preservation says, and those are their instructions. So we'll go by that. So that we'll go by that because the National Center for Home Food Preservation is pretty much our holy grail of where we get our information. So that is what I am going to go with. I'm not saying that the others are wrong, and they just vary by minutes as far as how long you have to wait and when you should remove your weight so it's basically the same there's just some time differences um, the other thing that i wanted to go over really quickly before we actually do a little bit of canning because i want to show you i want you to hear what your canner should sound like and get a feel for what it's like so you don't have to be afraid of it um, one of the things that you always want to check is your vent it's also called a pet cock you want to make sure and check that and make sure it is clear of any debris and you can do that simply by looking through it you should be able to see light through it and you also want to make sure that it's nice and clean what i do to clean my canner and make sure that it's always free of debris I didn't, you don't need to do this every time, but I do do it periodically to make sure that that stays nice and clean. I just take a handy dandy small straw brush and I just stick it in there and move it around. And it'll get rid of any sediment buildup or anything you have in there. And you can tell that it's free and clear. That's really important. Um, the other thing too is you also want to make sure that the where your dial gauge is. If you have a dial gauge canner, there's also a port there similar to this one. You wanna make sure it's clean as well and I just do the same thing. Just stick the straw in there, kind of move it around and get rid of any buildup that is in there. Um, you also want to replace, this is a safety plug and you wanna make sure that that's always in good shape. If it starts to become brittle or cracked, you need to make sure that you replace that. So those are some things to look for. Um, you always wanna make sure that after each canning session, you thoroughly clean your canner. Um, I use vinegar in my water during the canning process to keep my jars nice and clean and to keep uh, prevent mineral deposits from collecting on the outside of my jars. So it's gonna be especially important if you're gonna use vinegar in your water that you clean it really well when your canning session is over because it can pit the inside of your canner if you don't do that. So what we're gonna do now, and I highly recommend that those of you who are have some reservations about using your canner do this. We're going to can up some water when we're just gonna do a test run so that you can get a feel for how the canner works and the sounds that it should make. Um, the other point that I wanted to make, and I should have said something earlier, I, sorry, I got distracted. For a pressure canner to be approved for safe canning, it must hold a minimum of four quart jars. And the little Amer all-American canner baby guy, the 910 does hold four quart jars. So it is approved for canning. I know that was a question that I got recently and it is fine to can with it because it does hold four quart jars. With that being said, your minimum amount of jars that you have to have for correct processing is two. So if you just wanted to do a small batch of something, you have to have at least two quart jars or four pint jars to have 
your food be processed properly. So never just process one jar of something and don't go, if you're doing pint jars, don't go below four pint jars. So it's two quarts or four pints is the minimum that you have to have in your canner for it to process correctly. Water bath canning does not have any minimums. Pressure canning does. So I'm gonna get things set up and I'm gonna show you how to do a test run with your pressure canner. Okay guys, I have my rack in the bottom of my canner and I have filled my canner with two to three inches of water. I have about three inches in there and it is just barely simmering. Modern canning guidelines state that you do not need to pre-sterilize jars and lids as long as you are canning for 10 minutes or more, and we're gonna do that. So all I did was make sure my jars were washed nice, nice and clean, and you wanna make sure you rinse them very well. You don't want any soap residue left in them because that can make your food taste funky. So, um, and lids, they just need to be washed and set aside. You no longer need to simmer them. There was a time when you had to simmer your lids. You don't need to do that anymore if you're using the ball canning lids. Other, I would check the brands, and I guess I need to start saying this in my videos, other brands may be different. So any equipment you're using, make sure you follow the instructions that come with them, but balls lids do not need to be, um, and the curl lids do not need to be um, sterilized. They do not need to be simmered. So I just wash those and set those aside. You wanna make sure that you start with hot jars. I keep a sink full of extremely hot water and I keep my jars hot that way. Some people keep them in their dishwasher. It's up to you how you want to do that. Because of the way my kitchen is set up, my sink works really well for me. So you just need to take your tongs and get your jars out. And you always want to have something underneath them. Sit them on a towel or a cutting board. You don't, you can cause thermal shock to your jars, which will crack them if you put them on a surface such as granite. If they're hot and the granite is cold, you will crack your jars. And if you're putting hot liquid into a jar that's not been preheated, it can also cause thermal shock to your jar and crack it. So always hot jars, hot food. So the next thing we would do is use your funnel. And then in this case, I'm just using hot water, um, for this and this, like I said, this is a wonderful way to get familiar with your canner. So we're just going to fill our jars to a one inch headspace. And I talk about headspace in my um, other video, just ba canning basics. Um, I go over headspace, so you may want to um, go over there and watch that video for that reason. Headspace refers to the amount of space between the food in your jar and the lid. So, and it is important, headspace, it is important to prop, to follow proper guidelines on headspace. That has to do with um, your lid sealing and all that. So it's really important. Headspace is a big deal. Okay, so I filled my jars to one inch headspace, typically one inch one inches is about to this bottom band on the screw part of your jars. So now what we would do is you would, and you can also measure that. If you have a debubbling tool, you can measure the correct head space. You just put that on the edge of the um, jar and it should touch the top of the food for one inch there. But it also has increments for other measurements as well. Half inch, quarter inch, and three quarter inch as well. So you can measure that way. So the next thing that you would wanna do is debubble. We're doing liquid so there's nothing to debubble or releasing air bubbles. But to do that, you just take your um, debubbling tool or a chopstick or a plastic butter knife and just kind of poke around the edge to release any air bubbles that are trapped in your jar. So you would do that. And then the next thing you would do is use a paper towel or a, um, dishcloth and we're going to clean the rim. Typically I dip mine in white vinegar that makes sure that your rim is really clean and then you just go around your rim make sure it's nice and clean and then you're going to center your lid and then you're going to apply your band to what we call fingertip tight. Now I talk about this also in the other video. Fingertip tight just means that you're going to screw on the band until you feel resistance. You don't want to go past that and make it too tight, but you don't want it to be loose either. So just screw it on until you feel resistance. And then you're going to use your jar lifter and we're going to lift them into our canner. Okay. 
Like I said, you need a min minimum of two quart jars. And we have that. So we're going to attach our lid. The All-American canner has a notch on the pot and an arrow on the lid to line up. And I'll line those up. And then we are going to tighten our thumb screws two at a time, opposites. Now, a word about the All-American canner, because this is a common complaint and it is something that I experienced as well when I first got it. When you first get it, the lid doesn't want, sometimes the lid will not seat perfectly onto the pot. And when you crank up your, your heat and you start building pressure in your pot, it will leak a little bit and you'll see steam coming out from the side, water will kind of bubble out from the side, you'll hear a hissing sound. There's nothing wrong with your canner. Sometimes it just takes a couple of sessions for your lid to seat properly on your pot. And um, the All American um, manual will explain that to you. But there's nothing wrong with your canner as long as you haven't dropped it or anything. There's nothing wrong with it. It just takes a time or two for that to go away. I know that was a huge concern for me when I first got it. So <clears throat> we have it all locked down. We're gonna crank up the heat to high and when I bring you back, I'm going to show you what we mean by venting. Okay, guys, I'm bringing you back because I want you to kind of hear something. We don't see steam yet, but you can hear that this, you can hear that there is steam wanting to come out of it. Okay, guys, I'm bringing you back. We don't have steam coming out just yet, but I wanted you to hear this so that you know what's, what sounds are normal. You can hear the water starting to boil in your canner, and every now and then you'll see a couple of droplets of water plop up and over. You'll hear that. It'll kind of spit if you will, the vent will kind of spit, but we don't have steam coming out yet, so we can't start our 10 minutes of vent time. You can see there's droplets of water kind of bubbling above the um, vent. Okay, I brought you in even closer. You can see a little bit of steam is starting to come out and droplets of water are kind of plopping out the top of it. Kind of spurting out so at this we can see you want to see a steady stream of steam coming out and at that point you start your 10 minutes of venting time we're not quite there but we're almost okay i don't know if you can see it perfectly but i do have a steady stream of steam coming out of my vent so I can start timing. You can also, I'll stop talking here in a minute so you can hear it. You can also hear your jars kind of moving around in there from the boiling water. And you can also hear the steam clearly. That's what we want to hear and see for 10 minutes. Okay, it's just a few minutes later, but I wanted to bring you back. You can really see the steam pouring out as pressure is building up in there. You can hear your jars rattling around and you can hear the steam as well as see it. Okay guys, things are really going crazy in there now. It, you, can really, you can tell the difference in the, as it's building pressure in there. So once your 10 minutes are up, it's time to add your weight and the weight will have 5 PSI, 10 PSI, or 15 PSI. So find the correct one for your altitude. I'm doing 10. So we're going to apply the weight at 10 pounds of pressure. You wanna do it carefully, that's very hot. Um, you don't wanna get burned. And then for the dial gauge, you will see your gauge start to move. My weight will start rocking when my dial gauge is at 10 pounds of pressure or 240 degrees. And I'll bring you in close so you can see that here in a minute. Um, so the next thing is you're just gonna wait for it to build more pressure in your canner and wait for your weight to start to rock or for your gauge to be at the correct PSI. Okay guys, I wanted to bring you in really close so you can really get a feel for what is going on here. You can see on the dial that we are building pressure. 
And then where our weight is, you can hear a little bit of hissing. You'll see some water, some moisture accumulating around the bottom of the vent. And you can really hear things moving around inside of your canner. So for my altitude, we're looking for 10 PSI. My weight will start rocking when my gauge says 10 PSI or 240 degrees. We're getting close. Right on the money. My gauge reads 10 PSI, 240 degrees, and my weight is rocking and rolling. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna start your time. So look at the time. And then we're going to gently and slowly decrease our heat. We do not want our weight rocking and rolling like that the whole time. And you don't want your temperature in your PSI to go past what's correct for your area. So just gently, gently decrease it. Okay, I've slowly decreased my heat, and you can tell it's not going crazy anymore. My temperature and the PSI reading on my dial gauge are holding steady, and we want to continue to listen for it. Like I said, you want it to rock one to four times a minute, so if you've gone, um, if it's not doing that, you need to turn your heat back up. And then it stopped again. So just keep doing that for your correct processing time. And then when your time is up, we're gonna turn the heat off. Okay, once your processing time is up, you're gonna turn your heat off. And you can hear things start to calm down inside your canner. And we're gonna let it go until the canner returns to zero pressure naturally. So for me, I have the dial gauge. So my dial gauge, when it reads zero, I have returned to zero pressure. Okay guys, we're about halfway through our cooling time and I just wanna bring you in real quickly so you can kinda of hear what's going on. You can still hear your jars moving around a little bit. There's still some hissing around your weight, but you can definitely tell that things are calming down. Okay guys, my dial gauge says zero pressure. So always make sure that you use a hot pad or pot holder for removing your weight. Um, and I do it slowly, cause sometimes you can still have a little bit of pressure in there even though it says zero. So I gently take it off. And there's still a little bit, I don't know if you heard that, but you could still hear a little bit. So I'm gonna leave it on for another minute or so. And then I will try again. Okay, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but you can still kind of hear your jars moving around just a little bit inside. So we're gonna take the weight off and our pressure is completely gone. I didn't hear anything. It's okay to hear a little bit of hissing when you take it off um, and then just set it aside. And Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to, we've removed the weight, all of our pressure is gone. We are going to loosen our lid One of the safety fish features I forgot to mention when we were talking about this pressure canner earlier, and I'm sure they're all different. Honestly, my only experience has been with the All-American canner, so I don't have a lot of experience with others. But one of the things that people are concerned about is their uh, canner exploding. There are little um, catches um, around where your thumb screws are that there's no way this lid is going anywhere because it will catch where your um, thumb screws are. So just another thing to help you not be nervous about canning if you have the All American canner. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and open the lid and I'm just gonna sit it ajar to let it cool gradually and we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes before we take our jars out. So you can see it's still pretty steamy, 
but everything's nice and quiet now. And uh, we're just gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and then we will remove our jars. The 10 minutes of your jars sitting after processing is real, and you've returned to zero pressure, that's important. Um, that will help alleviate siphoning problems. I know some people, I know you guys, are, if you're watching this, most of you are probably new, but people who are not new to canning have experienced siphoning issues. And this is one of the ways of making sure that that doesn't happen. Okay guys, our 10 minutes are up. So we wanna remove our lid. You always wanna make sure you remove it away from you so you don't give yourself a steam bath and get burned in the face. We don't want that. Um, and you always wanna make sure to remove your hot jars to either a towel or um, a cutting board. If you put them directly on your counter, you run the, dam the, you run the risk of damaging your jars, number one. They could crack or break, especially if you have um, granite or something that's kind of cold to the touch. You can cause thermal sh shock and break your jars, and we don't want that. So make sure you have something underneath them and we're just going to lift them out. And you want an inch to two inches between your jars for cooling. I cover all that in my other video about canning basics, if you need to know that. And then you're just gonna let them cool and wait for them to seal. My recommendation, I know all the canning books say to let them rest for 12 to 24 hours, and that is true, but I always check my seals before that time. They should seal within an hour or two after removing them from the canner. So I just go down my row of jars and poke them. They've cooled enough by that time that they're not too hot to the touch to do that. And if your lid flexes up and down, they're not sealed. At that point, I would just take that jar and put it in the refrigerator so that the food doesn't go bad. In my mind, waiting 24 hours to check your seals is too long if you wanna preserve the food that's in your jar. So in case something wouldn't seal, I don't have that happen very often, but it can happen. So um, once your 12 to 24 hour rest period is over, you're gonna wanna remove your bands, check your seals again. And I go over that in my other video, great ways to check your seals, make sure you've got a good one. You're gonna wash your jars and label them and then store them in a cool, dark, dry place. So that's it, you guys. This is not hard. I hope, hope, hope that I have put some of your fears to rest if you've been afraid of using your pressure canner. It's not hard. It's just a matter of step by step. And once you do it a few times, you get used to the steps and then you don't forget things. But like I said, just in case, I have my handy dandy checklist for you to download and keep on hand so that you don't miss anything. So I hope this has been helpful. Leave me a comment, guys, if you have any other questions or if there's something else I can do for you. My next video is going to be uh, basics for water bath canning for beginners or refresher for those of you who may not have been canning for a while. Um, and I hope that this series has really been helpful to you. So again, leave me questions in the comment section, like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.